Don't be a damn, go get you some money. Don't be a damn, go get you some money. Go get you some money, you out with nothing. Just bought a stick in the can with a hundred. Give me a lick in the can with a twenty. Shit, I always in the can with a hundred. I ain't spending no some nigga that done. We the one who try to work. Another familiar face made an appearance at that Baton Rouge video shoot. His 17 year old relative can be seen in the surfacing video surrounded by and even holding a possible firearm. Take a look at these videos that spread quickly online of the shoot. Young boy can be seen in the front wearing a black vest alongside others parading around weapons and money. But if you look closer, you'll see 17 year old Jeffrey Tate with gun in hand, a part of the video's vibe. Now, earlier this month, Tate was believed to be involved in the murder of another 17 year old. Javon Brown was shot to death walking home from school in December. Investigators indicting another suspect in the case and awaiting the fate of Tate and one another. Since the incident, Jeffrey Tate has asked to move to California to live with rapper NBA Youngboy. So what does the DA's office have to say about the suspect visibly carrying a weapon on film? Well, according to Hiller Moore, nothing will be done to Tate because he is not a convicted felon, nor is he under bond obligation. Now, as for young boy, the DA's office says he is a convicted felon and could likely face charges for possession of a firearm. Did you know that becoming a rapper is the number one cause of death amongst young black men? Have you ever wondered why the incarceration and murder of rappers is so accepted and somewhat celebrated amongst today's society? Today, we're going to explore an example of this phenomenon. Welcome to The Rap Trap, hosted by Ayo Conseco. Pull a wig out where you heard it. Knock a bitch down in my Air Max. Bag rich business, I wear that. Get a fiends of blunt, let them share that. Show the chopper to your crib, then tear that. I can send a load, tell me where it. But how the money neat though? I'm bagging up some more thought with gringos. When you hit my phone, use the lingo. Money all around like casinos. Trap house jumping like bingo. Welcome back to the Rap Trap. I'm Ayo Canseco, fearless leader of Ayo Nation and the Men Too Movement. And this is, in hindsight, um, whenever you can drop a music video and they get picked up by the news, uh, that's pretty much a telltale sign that you are on a hit list. Um, and here on the rap trap, I have a theory uh, called the golf course theory, where I show that the heads of these record labels are, let's just say they meet at a golf course and they meet with the heads of um, the judicial system. That means the judges, lawyers, prosecutors, um, owners of privatized prisons, uh, the heads of the big pharma. Um, I like to believe that Michael Jordan is out there. Um, respective clothing brands are out there. Um, everybody who, ha who makes money off the destruction of the black warrior class is on that golf course and they're putting money into the music industry. They're putting money into the hands of the heads of Epic, Atlantic, Universal, Def Jam, same shit. Anybody who is going to have influence over which artists, what kind of artists are being put out there on the forefront, shown as examples, they're putting money into their hand. Like, keep doing what you're doing. Nigga, we're going to be rich, nigga. They're making an investment. They're investing in rappers because rappers are the best billboards. A rapper wears your shoes, your shit go up. A rapper say something about your, your Bentley, your car. Tell them all they ain't scared to go to prison. Tell you what pill to pop. Why wouldn't these people put money into the record execs telling them hey man fuck all that goddamn conscious bullshit man i need you to get kodak nba young boy ynw melly tay k nigga young and ace nigga sign these motherfuckers 
Matter of fact, we, we didn't draw it up a goddamn uh, a requirement list we'd like you to go by. Uh, we had our marketing teams, you know, find the best homes or the best situations that you can have these artists. Um, and then even on your end, what we're going to do, the judicial branch probably ain't got to put no money in. They like, shit, we're going to, we both going to win right here. You keep on sending young blacks through my system. And whenever you want me to, I'll pull your respective artists off the street. I.e. NBA young boy. Once the label has done what they want to do with the artist, they put that call in. Now all of a sudden, fucking old cases start popping up and all this good shit right here. They can pull you off the street. That's a requirement. We have to be able to pull you off the street at any fucking time. Once we realize that you run your course, Bobby Smurda, Tay K, YNW Melly, um, XXX Temptation, these are all good examples of an artist running their course. And before they get to be that salty, bitter artist doing the um, uh, Rich the Kid shit, the Tory Lane shit, where they call out the fucking label for not, you know, y'all ain't doing enough for me and all this shit like this. Let's go and pull this motherfucker off the street so we got more to worry about than fucking how his music ain't being promoted like it was when he first came out. I think a very good example of someone who escaped it, but you get to see what the escape looks like. If prices to promote on this show for artists are $200. For small business owners, it's $100. Do not contact me until you're ready to make a transaction. I've been saying this for a year and a half now. Do not send me a video, a song, anything of you until you are ready for promotion, meaning you have the money in hand. It's obvious you want me to promote you, but you don't want to spend the money. And that's why you are where you are. That social media sponsorship bullshit doesn't work. You can spend $25, but nothing happens. You've been doing, you niggas will spend $25 a million times instead of paying $500 one time and get some real promotion. Nobody watches local artists. When they see a sponsored video, they scroll past it. So why would you think that that is a viable way of promotion? Because it's cheap and you don't know what the fuck you're doing. And a lot of you niggas really need that person. But you don't even want to pay that person to tell you what you need to do. But you know you don't know what you're doing because you've been failing for this long. It is what it is. For all my YouTubers also that are doing the wrong shit and you're trying to get on the right track. Um, we have YouTube classes. Um, they cost... Uh, 550 for the whole class but um the first session is 250 the last two sessions are 150 at the end you will be monetized um of course we don't do the whole class in one day it's just you learning how to do your thumbnails tagging title all that shit like that uh and your algorithm how to get in the system um but if you want that hit me up in any one of the contacts that i have um, and we'll get started on that also. Is that boy, um, Sada, uh, not Sada, Saba, the pull up with a stick, let it hit. What the fuck was it? And it's a shame I can't even remember this nigga name. If, for as hot as that song was, nigga can't even remember the motherfucker name, man. Um, I would say designer. I can say designer. But motherfuckers like that who have a song and the song is bigger than the artist. So what a label will do instead of having to deal with the artist for all this time and uh, you know all this shit right here. Look. Go on pull his goddamn. Go on get his ass off the street. Put something else on his mind so he can't worry about how the fuck we robbing him. And on top of that. We're going to get an influx in sales 
because everybody likes an incarcerated rapper when they first get incarcerated. Everybody likes a dead rapper when they first get killed. So sales go through the fucking roof and we've seen it time and time again. The biggest part of this whole trap, this whole system, in order for it to work, the artist has to understand that if they don't put their life and their freedom in danger at every turn, they're going to flop. It's over with. At every turn, you have to be willing to throw everything away. Hence the NBA Youngboy wave or, or phenomenon, Kodak Black phenomenon. I go to jail whenever. I don't give a fuck. Until you get that Kodak Black situation where ain't no acting out that's going to get you out of it. It's over. And you get to see how people, you know, just start gradually dwindling. The support gradually starts dwindling. And those cries of, ah, free meat meal, free meat meal, free meat meal. That shit turns into, that motherfucker deserved it. That motherfucker was doing stupid ass shit. Without your presence being felt, and I just said meat meal just for, to show you people chanting. Obviously that was bullshit what the motherfuckers did. Without your presence being felt, see a lot of y'all, uh, these bloggers, these kids, they don't understand what happens to other people when you get locked up. The first example I can give you is your bitch. The bitch that you always, you tell her what to do, she running, she scrambling to do whatever you say do, go get me some cheesecake, rub my feet, whatever, like just anything, anywhere, she gonna do it. She's gonna be the first one that you recognize like something ain't right. Something ain't right here. I'm, yeah, so um, go over there and tell, uh, can we talk about us one time? And this will be the first time when you talking to her that you don't automatically either hang up or cuss out. Because now you seeing that you, you, you recognize that my circumstances have changed. I'm trying to get the fuck out of here and I need these people to work for me right now. I'm trying to get home. But she don't want to talk about me coming home. She want to talk about us and how. Fuck. She want to talk about us and how it's going to be different when I come home. Because when you was out here, you wasn't even, you, you, all that shit you were doing, we got to do this shit different. Hey, 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 listen. Listen. I need you. Nah, you, 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 it's time for you to listen to me. And after her doing that a couple times, hanging up on you and shit like that, calling your home, calling your lackey, and they not answer. Right hand man, and they not answer the phone. It starts to humble you to where now, when you call the bitch, because she the only one who answered the phone, hello? Hey, man, you need to stop that, man. You know when I get out, I'm going to do you right. I don't know, because you did that. I think I need to. That's when my, you like all this. It's like. So it's, it's, it's a difference. It's a difference. So that's happening with the team around you. And that's all the fuck that you have to keep your name going, to keep a movement going on the street for real. If these people is, is falling by the wayside, who, like, now we get back to your name being played with out there. Now, when motherfuckers talk about you in the blogs or different artists and shit like that, 
Motherfuckers kind of get, they getting a little loose. Getting a little loose. Because they know they're not, they not going to see you nowhere. And they feel like your team ain't really, because you didn't put nobody in position to actually be that rock. If something were to happen to you, you always wanted to be the one that was the rock because you just wanted to bird feed motherfuckers. You wanted to be the top dog and just throw the... So now when you gone, there is no... There's nothing. It's nothing. There is no system of... of in case there's no fail-safe system. It's fucked. And people can see that. With TMZ and these fucking investigator reporters and shit like that. Like, you will start noticing a motherfucker name getting played with. Shit that wasn't being said when he was out here. Now shit is just being thrown out that motherfucker. And you won't ever understand this until you're not in a position to defend yourself. And you have to... And you can't fight. And you can't fight... This is when all the bullshit start coming out. All the bullshit start coming out. And all, just it's, and then you're going to have rumors. Oh, Cody ain't getting beat up in there. Oh, nigga that took his trade, man. I know what happened. Fuck, nigga. I was in that bitch. Fuck, nigga. Because no one has any reason to say anything good about you anymore. Good stories about Kodak aren't selling. And we, we talking about NBA Youngboy because... Like, you look at a person that's in your same shoe. You look at your peers. They do the same thing that you do. We do the same thing in the dope game. A house get hit down the street. You don't, oh, it's just them. Oh, fuck this shit, my nigga. No, that has to do with me. I do the same shit he do. It don't matter if he sell X pills and I sell coke. He sell weed and I sell uh, hard. He do the same shit I do and they hit him. I need to pay attention to that. That's not what's going on here. We've turned the rap game to the new trap, but we're not treating it like no trap. We think when Takashi 69 get hit, or uh, Kevin Gates get hit, or uh, fucking NBA Youngboy get locked up, Meek Mill. All right, that them nigga, fuck that shit. So you suffer the same fate a couple months out. So this is what I'm saying, Cody ain't black, but it has everything to do with NBA young boy. He not doing nothing different. So as motherfuckers start getting loose with your name, uh, now motherfuckers is finding every reason to just bash you. Look at what he was doing. Now they, now they taking little shit you were doing that they used to root you on for. They used to love when you be on that bitch smoking big blunts, putting that fire in the camera. Fuck, nigga. All that shit you were doing. And now they playing that shit like, see there? Yeah, see, he should have been got hit. See, that? that's that bullshit there. And it's motherfuckers like me who been saying the shit from the jump. Like, hey, like, my nigga, you don't, you don't see how you asking for You don't see how you in position to where you don't got to do that and you still acting like that? You don't think they're going to catch up with you? This is when that, that voice of reason start hitting you. When it ain't nothing but you and these four walls. And it seems like everybody didn't gave the fuck up. You haven't dealt with fucking resistance. You haven't dealt with opposition like this before. Actually, some of y'all have. Some of y'all have, but you always had, and this is how they crippled you, you always had that motherfucker at the label fixing it, fixing it, never actually requiring you to change anything because what you do makes them money. So what they see is, fuck this shit, I'm going to drive this bitch and tell this. Like, so I'm just doing little tinkering shit on the engine that'll make it run, but it's not going nowhere. The transmission is fucked. The motor is fucked. This, it's not going nowhere. I'm just going to make it to where you can get from point A to point B. But this bitch finna blow in a minute. Like, this bitch finna, it's old with. And that's all they did. 
get them out, no real repercussions. Nothing really changes. So you keep on playing with this fucking system. And these motherfuckers can have their hands on like, hey, we did everything we could for Kodak. We did everything we could for uh, Cantrell. Every time he got out, he was on our budget. Putting yourself in more and more of a, in a hole from the label. Which is what they want. The more legal trouble you get in, the more, the more they have to bail you out, the more you owe them. Until you get to a point where you're fucking broke. Niggas ain't gonna see wealth. Niggas ain't gonna have money in well into their fucking deep into their twenties. When these niggas turn thirty years old, these niggas gonna be so fucking broke down and fucked up. And they gonna look back and say, "What?" Cause they gonna be alone. This is when they gonna start doing the interviews. You know, when I was at my height, man. You know, it was just I just had the wrong people around me. That's why I'm coming out with my new project, man. You know, the new project is called uh, uh, Redemption. You know what I'm saying? And now you're going to start saying the shit that you should have been saying right now. Mark my words. Mark my words. It's happened time and time again. And as I was just speaking about peers, your peers are all the people that have been through the industry before you. Instead of you niggas trying to pick up game where these other rap niggas didn't fucked up at y'all nigga fuck that shit nigga it's a whole different it's a whole different game my nigga we in there bitch we in there bitch them old niggas hating them old niggas got did the same way and them old niggas was once young niggas who felt like the old niggas then was hating on them and this is how they get us fucked up. As a community of black people, they cut us off from our wisdom, which is our elders. It's the Willie Lynch theory all the way through and through. Separate the men and the women, the light skin, the dark skin, the old and the young, the pretty and the ugly, the fast and the slow, the big and the small. Treat them differently. So one feels like they're more superior than the other one. The whole fucking time, we try Tyreek Nasheed, we see him as one big nigga. There is no difference in their eyes. Only in ours. Only in ours. We're the only one that, that look at the uh, the basketball, the college basketball game, and see different niggas. To them, it's one big motherfucker run up like on the whole court. They don't even see a, a difference in Jersey. What's even worse about this situation when we get into this 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 young boy shit is you look at how he came out and confessed to him having herpes. I want you to pay attention how that didn't hurt his career in the least. But do you know if he would have got off probation, you know, put his head, you know when he got off probation, I'm just going, you know, just uh, 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 had his head down and all that shit right there. If he would have came out and did a video about being all papers and, and you know, just, you know what I'm saying, it's a new day, I'm finna, you know, start investing in businesses and, and you know, just speaking or, or come out saying, like, it's a fucking trap. Nigga, they trying to get us all something that maybe would kind of unite shit instead of doing a video if he would have did a video like that, the shit would have flopped. I just want you to pay attention to that right now. We're going we're gonna to break this down in sections. You having a permanent illness, sexually transmitted disease, could not hurt your career. But you doing something positive after being released off of probation, being a free man, would have flopped your shit. Instead, what you have to do after being let off probation, after making it, let off probation, you have to do everything in your power to get locked up again. Instead of me flexing 
by buying a fucking corner plaza in Baton Rouge or somewhere in Louisiana. Get some chicken in this motherfucker. Get my little brother with his fucking retarded ass. Get him on a skag. Get him in the little homeboy cutting grass out this bitch. But you know what they'll say if that happened. Man, your boy got his brother might have been cutting grass. Now that's what these fuck nigga. That nigga broke in a bitch, bro. And he knows that. Because he came from a place where positive is to be laughed at. Smart shit is to be laughed at. You putting yourself, your family, in danger of being hurt in any way, now that's to be respected. That's to be respected. And the labels make sure that they get somebody from that fucking territory instead of a motherfucker who wants to put something in motherfuckers head. You look at these independent artists that have been independent that can't get picked up by a label. And look at the motherfuckers that get signed and pushed to the top. Let me go further. Let, let, I, 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 I want to put some accountability down right fast. Do you know that the rap trap could only work if we wanted to hear that shit? If we wouldn't tune into that shit, it wouldn't be no market for it. But because us, it's ingrained in us to be drawn to that negativity, to be drawn towards that drama. We want to see a nigga get fucked over so we can go right to the next nigga. Well, you don't understand how much niggas fuck with finesse two time, man. Niggas fuck with finesse two times, and he did exactly what the streets would want him to do. Whatever the fuck happened, it had something to do with a show and having a big ass gun. He did exactly what the fuck a real street nigga was supposed to do. When you get in the industry, don't turn Hollywood if you still got ride around with that pole with that fucking stick. Ready to edit bitch out. Ready to edit bitch out. But then when you end up where he at, Bobby Smurda. Is motherfuckers gonna be on Bobby Smurda when he come home? Is he gonna have a long lasting career? Are they gonna support his music? Fuck no. They might throw him a little something that, you know, do a little show here and there and shit like that. But niggas ain't really on that. Motherfucker gonna be waiting to fuck Bobby Smurda up for whatever fucking reason. Motherfucker swear to God that they love, you know, Mano, street respected, all that good shit. Niggas don't fuck with his music. It's insane. There is no beating this shit. So I'm a real nigga, real everything, everything real, you know everything, everything, but I'm just not on that retarded shit that y'all on. I'm not finna make I'm not finna make my own case for the law. Oh man, fuck that man. I wanna look over here. Oh yeah, he real nigga thing, yeah, what's up? But we over here on this. We on Takashi. Yeah, that nigga real. He yeah, you know, he did it. He did his time. He didn't snitch on nobody, you know what I'm saying? All that, but I wanna I wanna see what this new Takashi shit gonna be about. Pay attention to me. Cause it's looking like Smurda and uh bitch and Takashi might get out at the same time, if I'm not mistaken. Watch you get more love. Seem like those of us who call ourselves real street niggas would push Bobby Smurda to the very top and make Takashi fail. Pay attention to what happens. It's a fucking trap. I do everything that y'all ask me to do as a fucking gangster. I put guns in the video. I, nigga, I'm ready to fight in every show. I, I shoot a nigga on stage. I jump off the stage and fight niggas. Nigga, anything. I'm in the street, I'm spinning blocks, I'm shooting it out with niggas.
but y'all won't let me leave that alone. How am I ever going? I can't be a, I can't perpetually be a, a, a gangster. Like I'm going, I'm going to get killed. I'm going to go to prison forever. I can't do this forever. Young boy brother is on some shit with a, uh, something happened with a motherfucker getting uh, a little dude, 17 year old getting killed. That's what I'm telling motherfucker. You talking to him. He went number 18 with that Hancho De Niro shit. Like, niggas is knocking off, like, niggas is really knocking shit down at 15 years old. At 18, you damn near OG. You do everything that the streets ask you to do, and they will never let you stop. The streets, the unspoken code in the street is continue to be gangster until you die or go to prison. That's when you can stop being gangster. Hey, hold on, whoa, hold on, my nigga. Hold no, hold on, dog. No, dog. I, I got to be able to enjoy my money and, and, and enjoy my, you know, the fruits of my labor and my hard work. At some point. I mean, yeah, just enjoy it while you, while you thugging. But I, I want to have this shit for a long time. Oh, this is a fuck nigga, right? That ain't a fuck nigga, bro. That ain't a fuck nigga. That's a Hollywood ass nigga. That ain't a fuck nigga. And once that word start going, now it's no longer cool. And just wait till this cool shit fall off. But like, young boy has to be with this fuck nigga. Fuck, got pounds in it, bitch. Got guns in it, mother. He has to do that in order for this shit not to fall down and everybody start pointing out his fucking flaws. He ha he's really on defense. What they say, a good defense is a, a great offense. So I keep doing this shit so you don't look at my fucking flaws. I'm giving you new shit to talk about, new shit to talk about. But you can't live like that. That's why it's a trap. Just as soon as you recognize it, ah, oh, he Hollywood. And it's like, who, hold on, hold the fuck on. And it's like the label runs with the street. You remember that scene in, uh, in, uh, fuck, Deuce Hell. What's that movie, y'all? Deuce Hell. Nigga gonna be mad I forgot that movie. What, it, what, it, Bobby Johnson, that shit. Was that South Central? But, it was a scene when uh, the gang uh, was putting uh, OG Bobby Johnson out, and the nigga who OG Bob, the, the 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 smoker, the sherm head motherfucker that OG Bobby Johnson saved, gotta go, Bobby. Can't be alone in here. That's the record label moving with the street. You got all this motherfucking car. You OG Bobby Johnson. You making, oh, it's an OG call. But just as soon as the streets say fuck you, here go the label. Gotta go, Bobby. Can't be alone in here. You don't have any friends. You look in this new bad, bad video and just look at all these motherfuckers. I'm just looking at these niggas in this video like, man, there's so many niggas in this video that probably just want this nigga to lose so fucking bad. Like, whenever you can't do what you have to do sober because you're so scared, every time you have to do a music video, you got to get high because you got to deal with motherfuckers that you don't want to deal with. And these niggas, look at the security guard in the video. That motherfucker looks so nervous. Like, these little retarded motherfuckers got, I don't know what the fuck going on. But it is what it is. Like I said, uh, everybody has a learning lesson. How they got to learn their lesson. As far as the rap trap, it keeps moving forward. Until someone that's actually inside comes on the show and lets it be known. We can't have no, oh, shout out to uh, Crazy Bone. A lot of folks been sending me his shit like, man, he's talking about the rap trap. Absolutely. But we need somebody that's in the industry right now 
right now to say this is what this is then more people like we we have too many fucking great black artists great black minds behind the scenes for us not to have we should have a black label biggest epic atlantic all that we should have we should be at the tops of those fucking labels at the very tops like how the fuck do we not have you know bad boy uh, you know whatever we need to have builders like them but it is what it is um make sure you go to the paypal make sure you go to the patreon um there's another version of this video on the patreon um had to do two versions um i'm starting to do that a lot lately um because i just i be going places with this shit and sometimes I really need to speak to the motherfuckers who just on the surface level. The deeper video is on the Patreon. Y'all hit the cash app. I see y'all in a minute. Love, love.